Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, the whirling mass of chaos. That is Dan's Model Works. And we are back with the Dodge Heavy Wrecker from the 70s. It's the CNT 900 or 800 or 600 or whatever you want to call it. Mainly because, as I said before, there were so many different engine options and things like that, that it the designation depended on how you optioned out the truck. So this is part four. And we haven't done anything to the actual casting from American Industrial Models. Work of art though it is. Actually, that's not quite right, correct. We've milled out a pocket at the front here, just so it sits on the frame better. As we left off last time, we were working on the frame. And we've got oh, probably most of the front of the chassis done. Of course, we've got the underside of our engine. And we've got the steering gear in, we've got the steering box, we've got the power steering ram on there. But we haven't done squat with the rear end. So what we will need to do is put basically the shackles that go up to the axles. They need to go on. And as well as that, we need some brakes. And... I have some castings. Got two out of the four I need. There we go. Let's see if we can focus on those. I said focus. There we go. So I might not use this one. This one I'm happy with. This one's got a little bubble right in the end. No big deal. If you've ever driven behind a, a dump truck, you'll know you see these things. And basically, they kind of go on to... It's, it's more than an arm. It's obviously the various lever and everything that causes the brakes to work. But they're usually kind of found there and there. And then there'll be another set inboard. And they're, they're set up differently on different trucks. But the ones that I'm thinking of are basically the ones that are, like I said, usually on older trucks. And this is an older truck, so we'll have them sitting there. What I want to accomplish in this particular episode is I want to get this thing onto its wheels. It's obviously never going to be a rolling chassis because these wheels are not going to roll. They're going to be firmly glued on. So I don't have much to do on the front wheels other than painting them up. They're pretty much ready to go. The rear wheels, I need to put a spacer in between so that they have just a, a little bit of space in between there. And then I need to put some sort of a sleeve on the back side so that I can put it onto my axle ends. I'm also going to be putting a circular plate on, and that's going to represent the back of the brakes. So I'm not going to try to do anything more ambitious than that and when you look at most truck kits i mean shoot any vehicle kit they they rarely make any attempt to model the the braking some newer ones will show you a disc brake through the wheel but basically so long as i've got a round circular plate covering 90 percent of the opening and that plate is actually what i'm going to be attaching my uh i know these aren't boosters brake cylinders. Somebody will tell me in the comments exactly what these are called, but they will actually fit in about here. So that's where we are. I've got all four of the air brake actuators molded and the, the flash taken off the back sides. I'm not going to bother putting the actual air lines coming off of them, even though if you usually, if you Follow behind uh, an older dump truck, you can see them. As I've said before, by the time we get the wrecker body on here, you're only going to be able to see these things when we flip it over. So I'm not going to quite go to that level of um, obsessiveness with these. I've molded my two fuel tanks. Now they're basically uh, a two-part mold. And as I've mentioned before, this came from MPC's Mack Truck Kit. This one, you can see that I've got some, some filler on the seam. If we look at this one, you can see, of course, the seam is visible. 
and hopefully by the time I get this all sanded down and everything, it will look like it's a metal tank. Um, I don't know why there's only basically one strap you can see. There's not another strap molded on here. Uh, don't know why that is. But they have kind of the, the beefy utilitarian, uh, no frills kind of fuel tank that you expect to find on a truck like this. Turning, uh, turning our attention to the rear suspension, as I mentioned, there is basically a structure that is, I don't know if it's cast or welded onto the axles, but it comes down and it engages basically in the, the equalization beam that goes from the front to rear axle. Well, I've finally gotten around to putting those on. Uh, it's just basically styrene and then they're glued in place. You're not really going to see them once the wheels get in place, but they, they should be there. Well, you'll see them kind of from the inside. I've started doing some of my wheel work. Now, I've basically painted the the sides of the wheels that are going to go together black. Just because you're not going to see any detail anyway. Now, you, as you can see, I've got a, basically a disc of plastic in there to act as a spacer. So that we'll end up with the wheels spaced thusly. And... The next step will be these discs and I've basically got a large circle and I've got a smaller one. Uh, it's not the thickest amount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through these so that they will actually be the sleeve that fits over the axle ends and they'll basically represent the, the back part of the brakes. I'm not really striving for any amazing detail here. These are just basically going to go on the backs of the wheels like this and serve to hold them in place. So something like that. And if you look at most car and truck kits, I mean, it's just basically a flat backing anyway. There's not a whole lot of detail on there. So I don't think I'm really cheaping out too much by going to something like this. But this will be what, once this is glued onto here, that's what will support it onto the axles. So if we look at the back side of our wheel assemblies, you can see this really has been messed with. On this side though, I've milled off this center hub detail here has been milled off basically with a Dremel. And these parts here, you can see I've got some black paint on them. They are going to glue, if I can stop dropping them, they're going to glue on like that. So I've got a gluing surface on each of the spokes, plus on this center area here. And as you can see, we now have a pocket which will be able to go over our axle ends. So that way, instead of it just being a... I think I'll just jam this on here and, and hopefully it won't snap off. At least we've got a bit of a collar that's fitting over our axle ends. Hopefully that will be strong enough. We shall see. And if you're wondering about the little bit of black paint that slopped on there. When we flip it around, that's so that when you look through, you're going to be looking at something that's black. Hopefully going to be less obvious. It's taken a surprising amount of time to paint the wheels. And most of this type of wheel, the with the, the spokes that are cast into a center section with removable rims. Usually the rims and that center section are all generally the same color. Um, on this particular truck, the rims themselves are a light gray color and the spoked section is either really dark gray or black. I decided to go with black. I think it looks very sharp. 
but it also means that the painting is a little bit more difficult. So that's what we're looking at for the outside of our of our tandem wheels, or our dual wheels rather. And the inside, I didn't worry about the very core because we have this going on here. And I'm going to be painting this kind of a, of a dark, to me, an iron color, just because it's basically the back of the brakes. And our brake assembly is going to be basically glued onto that, something like here. There'll obviously be a piece of plastic going from here to there. But I wanted to get the wheels painted, so that's what our rear wheels look like. And that's what our front wheels look like. And I think it looks pretty good. And it's actually been a long time since I cast these wheels. Probably a good four months. So it's nice to see them finally painted up. Now I will be dirtying them up and putting some rust around the nuts and things like that. So they are going to be quite a bit more weathered looking. So I'm not really going to be gluing much else on detail-wise to this. So I think my next step with this is, is I'm going to give it a coat of just some gray automotive primer. And that'll provide a good base coat for basically painting the, the frame and the suspension parts black. Um, I should still be able to paint the shock absorbers a yellow pad or a yellow color. I've got some beige for the engine so that our Cummins engine will be beige. And then, of course, we will be weathering it up because this is not by any means a, a new truck. So we've got our uh, chassis primed just with some regular old automotive primer. And I deliberately masked this area here because, of course, that's where our bed is going to be mounting, so why create an extra step of having to scrape the paint off that area? I will actually be brush painting the frame, mainly because it's so hard to get spray paint into all the little crevices and things. And I'm going to be painting the engine a different color, the tranny a different color. Um, so it's, I won't say it's just as easy, but... Not much more of a hassle to brush paint it. Actually, I hate brush painting frames, but um, spray painting, it's often really hard to get all the crevices anyway. Okay, I'm back after a couple days in Ottawa with the kids, seeing some museums and stuff. And I'm finally getting around to finishing up our brake mechanisms. And like I said, I don't know what this part is called. But I've cast four copies of this one, which is off of another kit. And the rest of it is basically styrene parts. So I had to get as close as I could. So I've got four of these, two. They're basically handed, depending on which side of the truck they go on. But I've got, uh, I've got two of one kind, two of the other kind. And they're going to be glued directly onto the wheel backs before I glue the wheels onto the truck. Here we can see we finally have our, our wheels glued on. They're on with super glue, which is basically a medium gap filling, although I actually did manage to come fairly close tolerances on the axle stub ends going into the backs of the wheels. So hopefully I'm not gonna have anything snapping off. Actually, I didn't have any of the wheels uh, break off the racer's wedge at any point. So we'll see how this ends up, how durable it ends up being. Now I've got the back of the wheel painted basically to me a dark iron. I think that's what it's called. Yep, dark iron, which is an awesome color. It basically looks like metallic crap. <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. It's a really dark brownish color, a little bit of purple in it, but it really does look like iron. So the, the wheel back has been painted that color. The arm that, that goes to the brake actuator. Brake actuator, I painted that steel because I just, I just couldn't see it being chrome. And leaving them resin color, I don't think that was an option either. 
So we are very close to gluing these things on and the, the brake mechanism has been glued onto the wheel so that basically when I put it on the truck, I can kind of rotate it to give it the sort of angle I want like that. And that's the wheels on, which was the goal for this video. I think I'm going to try to get the fuel tanks on before wrapping up this episode. The wheels went on pretty good. Of course, they don't turn, but I'm not planning on playing with this. And if we look at from behind, that's pretty much what you see when you're driving behind uh, an older tractor or dump truck. Sometimes... These guys are a little closer together, sometimes they're closer to the wheels, but I think that looks like I wanted to. And of course, remember, we've got a full body is going to be coming down anyway, so only when you pick it up, if you're strong enough to pick it up. And of course, the big question is, is with all these resin cast pieces, how flat does it sit? And we got one wheel's kind of a little floaty here, but I'm honestly... Not that worried about it, because by the time we get the resin cab sitting on here and the interior and all the other weight on this thing, I think over time it's just going to sit flat no matter what. So I've got this fuel tank is basically ready to go. The other one, I still have to sand the filler on my seams. I think I need to put a little cap, obviously, if we focus. need to put a, a fuel filler cap there. But yeah, like I said, I think I want to get these glued on, and then I'm going to call it quits for this particular video. I made a couple of brackets here just to hold the fuel tanks in place. I know they're not lined up with the strap. I'm still not quite sure how, how a fuel tank stays on with just one strap. But anyway, unless you completely flip this thing over, which is going to take some doing, you're never going to see that those aren't lined up. I was more concerned with them actually staying in place. So once the glue sets up, I'm going to give these a coat of semi-gloss black. And that's everything I'm doing on this for this episode. As you can see, we've got a dragging chassis. I won't call it a rolling chassis because these wheels don't roll. Got the fuel tanks on. I think they look pretty good. Certainly the sort of fuel tank I was looking for, just the utilitarian square type of, or I should say rectangular type. I won't say the chassis is done because one side or the other, I'm pretty sure there needs to be a couple of air tanks put in here. Um, if you're wondering, the battery box, the battery box, there's no battery box. The battery boxes are actually located inside the fender so when this swings away the batteries are actually kind of on a on a shelf right there and right there so the batteries were not actually down in the frame so as most of the upcoming work is going to be on the cab as i've mentioned before we have to take off these Double headlights, we have to install the single headlights with the big pie plates around. <clears throat> and something I'm pretty sure that's going to be a challenge is I have to come up with a way of mounting the windshield. Because you can see the windshield curves. And of course, I don't have just a nicely injection molded piece of curved styrene that's going to fit in there. Uh, all the kit comes with is some um, acetate. So what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to put a very thin piece of styrene super glued in here, top and bottom, that will kind of form a channel that the acetate can clip into. And if I keep it small enough, I should hopefully be able to snick it in place. I might be able to crash mold the acetate which is basically heat it up in an oven and, and jam it over a form. But that would entail me knowing the exact curve that I'm going to need here. Oh well, those are problems for another day. 
So I really want to get this wrapped up in terms of this episode. As I mentioned before, I'm fairly happy with how this is turning out. It certainly looks like a, a frame that came out of a kit, at least to my silly eyes. And you're probably saying, put the cab on, put the cab on. So we're going to stick the cab on. So there we go. That's the cab sitting on the frame. Like that. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, just keep on modeling.